guys! Today's video is guinea pigs 101 or guinea pig basics. So everything you need to know when you think about getting a guinea pig or have just gotten one. These tips are really only supposed to provide some basics. If you want more information on certain topics, I'm going to link some videos in the info box. So check them out if you're interested. Guinea pigs are social animals. They do well in pairs and groups and they should always have a partner. They provide each other with a sense of security, they sleep next to each other, they like to explore in pairs and eat together. A human cannot replace a guinea pig friend, so if you're thinking about adopting a guinea pig, remember that you need to adopt at least two. Three is a crowd, so people usually refer to three or more guinea pigs as a herd. The easiest group is one neutered boar and then one, two or three females. A pair of a neutered boar and sow is also harmonious. A group of several females can be successful as well, but the chances that they are going to start fighting eventually are a little bit higher than in the mixed group. A group of boars needs lots of space, way more than the other groups do. However, people who successfully bonded several boars say that these groups tend to have an amazing group dynamic. A lot of cages offered in stores are too small for guinea pigs. The minimum size a cage has to have are 120 cm x 80 cm, which is around 47 x 31 inches. And that's for two guinea pigs. This kinda is the same as a 2x4 CNC cage. The more space you can provide for your guinea pigs, the better. Levels don't really count as space, they are more of an extra feature. A good rule of thumb is one square meter, that's 10.7 square feet for the first two guinea pigs and then 0.5 square meters, that's 5.3 square feet for every additional guinea pig. If you're used to seeing small cages in pet stores, this may seem a lot at first. But cages can look really great in houses or apartments and be a real eye catcher. You can also decide to build your own wooden cage and you can fully customize them and make them fit any corner. Also very important is that the guinea pig cage doesn't have a wire bottom, but has a solid one, as wire bottom hurts the feet. For the cage setup, it's awesome if you can provide as many Heidi's as you have guinea pigs. Heidi's with multiple entrances are also better than the ones with only one entrance. Anything that provides shelter is a great Heidi. There are lots of different kinds of bedding out there. What kind of bedding works for you and your guinea pigs depends on a number of things, such as cage size, group size, your individual liking and time commitment. When it comes to shavings, Aston shavings are a great alternative for many owners. Paper-based bedding such as Carefresh can also be used, but make sure that it isn't dusty. In general, every form of paper or wood-based bedding needs to be dust extracted so that your guinea pigs don't breathe in all of this dust. The bedding I'm using is called Obios and is so far the best bedding I've ever had. Fleece is another popular alternative. Fleece needs to be spot cleaned and washed regularly and it needs an absorbent layer underneath it. Beddings to avoid are setter shavings, newspaper. Guinea pigs love hay and veggies. They need to have access to hay 24 seven. If you feed pellets, make sure you feed the plain, boring looking ones. Avoid anything with artificial coloring, sugar and animal products. Each guinea pig should eat no more than 1 8 of a cup of pellets a day. Even with a pellet based diet, guinea pigs need fresh vegetables. If you don't feed pellets, your guinea pigs are going to be getting all of the vitamins and nutrients from veggies. So hay is what they eat throughout the day and without pellets they should get at least 10-15% to of their body weight in veggies. Mine get around 20%. If you feed enough veggies, a healthy guinea pig doesn't need any vitamin drops. Introduce every new piece of vegetable slowly. Guinea pigs can eat fruit, but because of the sugar content they should only have a small piece once a week. To make sure that your guinea pig is feeling well, check their weight weekly. It's normal for their weight to go up and down, but if your guinea pig loses more than 50 grams in one week or steadily loses weight, then that's a sign that something is wrong. You can get a regular kitchen scale from Amazon to weigh your guinea pigs. Guinea pigs grow until they're about one, so they should be gaining weight until then. If you spend lots of time with your guinea pigs, you'll also get to know their character, who's first when it comes to feeding, who's very active, things like that. For example, my guinea pig Frida is always hungry and loves any kind of veggies, so when she suddenly stopped running towards me when it was time for feeding and seemed reluctant to eat, we immediately knew that something was wrong. When something suddenly changes, it is good to see a vet. With these types of videos, I always find it difficult to be 100% sure that I haven't missed anything or forgotten some details, so if you think of some important basics, comment them down below so that others can read them. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you guys next time! Bye!